Oh, oh fucking all. <laughs> couldn't be a woman. If it was a woman, she wouldn't be in ten, within 10 feet of Hey, you. we're back. I can't believe we that didn't go get parfaits. Perfect. We should have we said we were going to get parfaits. Parfait. We did, we did, we did. We're I'm, back. Everybody here we are parfait. back. We are. Have you ever met somebody that, we said, are that didn't like back. parfaits? Hell no. We, we are back. Did. We've returned. We have returned. Welcome, Welcome to the Parfait Talk. Welcome back to Shop Talk. Yes, it's fun times. I am Ronnie, this is Jermon, that's Ian, and that's Victor, the Parfait King. We just stopped off from finishing up talking about uh, the legends talk, talk. of uh, George. Per it doesn't need to make sense. It just needs to sound good. Of George Perez. Too bad it didn't either. Of George Perez taking off from DC. Uh, so far, most Maybe most of the writers having issues have been um, fairly professional when it comes to their leaving. Of course, there's always the lovely, glorious Rob Liefeld. Who does not, dear God, what did you do? It's like I'm leaving my recording. Ebony. Oh god. No, because we had such a good lead in. We did with the it parfaits. It was out of focus. Well, even the parfaits. It was Jermont's and her yelling at you. That was the perfect lead in. <laughs> All right. Everyone record. Is that recording? It is now. God damn it. Hold on. Hold on. He's doing something. He's dealing with himself. Now. Fuck you. Welcome back to Shop Talk. We, we didn't get no damn parfaits. Shut up about your parfaits. You you, there parfaits? will be no pancakes next time either. Good, maybe I won't be throwing oh, up. Oh dear mouth. God. We're back here at Shop Talk. I am Ronnie. That is Ian. This is Jermon. That is Victor. And the camera better be in focus. <laughs> We're back. We just finished off talking about George Perez and, of course, uh, the creative issues at DC. That's what we're talking Maybe about. They should have given him parfaits. Most of the writers at DC have been fairly professional once they've sort of can cantankerously left a book or some issues popped up. But, of course, we always have the lovely Rob Liefeld, who is the antithesis yeah. of all of that. <laughs> and when he left DC, he <laughs> left in a blaze of glory. A glorious Liefeld blaze. That involve pouches and they no feet. They are going to make a movie about that. And no feet. Uh, That's actually why he left. Uh, they wanted to do a sponsorship <laughs> deal with Reebok. <laughs> like, I don't do feet, damn it. I ain't drawing you no Reeboks. <laughs> they probably asked why the men why have bigger... Like have bigger... Man, uh, chests than the women do. Because that's not a DC thing. They always have big chests. I said tests. Uh, so, uh, of course, Rob Liefeld, of course, used the lovely Twitter... To explain a lot of his issues that he had with it. Good old social media. <laughs> I know. Twitter social just... And Li Rob Li Liefeld should have created Twitter. If he knew how. And we've lost Victor. He's just... We're just going to keep talking while he laughs. He's going to be our no studio audience. Please, no attention. Turn the camera print. this way. We'll yeah, a little just bit. Just no? Good? Good? Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm going to be switching over to this camera. Yeah. they just be wondering why there's a hyena in the, in the background laughing. <laughs> So Liefeld put it out on Twitter about a lot of his issues. Um, he said there was nuts and bolts stuff, of course. Uh, it was multiple editorial changes. One of his big things is that he took over Deathstroke. It was a Deathstroke, Hawkman, Hawkman, and Grifter. Grifter. Uh, and apparently Grifter was supposed to be a big book in DC. Of course, that changed. Um, leading into a big crossover with Superman, he said, uh, it required last-minute rewrites of complete issues. Uh, things, of course, that you know he's paid to do and that he's done done with before. Uh, he hinted at editorial issues with his editors wanting to do a complete change on his Hawkman stuff. Uh, he said Deathstroke, for the most part, was left alone because Deathstroke sold the most. Uh, but it also led to a lot of his 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 bad blood and, of course, him finally leaving uh, DC altogether. Guys, is this Liefeld being Liefeld? I would have said so before, but with all the other issues yeah. going on. Maybe he's just the most vocal about it. Say, normally I would say Liefeld being Liefeld. Like I said, giving the other people leaving, maybe their editor the core really is a problem. This was the one time, yeah, this was the one situation where it wasn't Liefeld. Like, the issues <laughs> the issues he's been having with editorial, that was them. Never thought I would hear the day that actually that, the, the, the Twitter said. <laughs> that the Twitter stuff, though, that was Liefeld. That was that Liefeld. Was Liefeld. That's, Liefeld. Classic, that's classic Rob. Uh, yeah. Last minute rewrite. I mean, but every writer, I think, in, in the comic book industry has last minute rewrites. Yeah. Uh, even old issues. Mm -hmm. uh, He's lucky he was consulted. A lot of times, point. like Straczynski's One More Day, you remember him saying, going, I didn't write that. 
Yeah. Just put my name put yeah. on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he he was talking about uh, Hawkman number zero. He had written this whole Hawkman story, and at the end, uh, he even he named. Here's the problem with Liefeld, with the unprofessional stuff, is he name checks people too, and that burns your bridges a lot yeah. quicker. Yeah. Uh, he he actually named Anne Nocenti, who I actually have quite a fondness of for her abilities and stuff. Um, uh, as, 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 as actually uh, coming in and saying, why won't why don't won't you let Hawkman number zero be a dream? Which was something he was adamant. Of course, he's adamant about everything. I saw him saying zeros. He's adamant about, and of course they went with it. And I think that said that was his last straw. He's like, screw it, screw you guys. Yes. Apparently, he quit three or four times. Don't know how the veracity of that statement is. I mean, again, Liefeld being Liefeld. Um, he blasted um, blasted a few creators on the way oh, out. Yeah. Um, Scott, Scott Snyder, Greg yeah. Capullo. Ugh. Let me tell you, so I've met Scott Snyder. I've interviewed the man. A nicer person does not walk this earth, especially given how quickly uh, he has gained success yeah. and how popular he's gotten. Um, it was uncalled for. I don't know what set Liefeld off. Um, and I will agree on certain issues when he said about that, if I make a take a side note. Batman will always sell Batman. But when you, but I've, uh, as as history has shown, when the writer's no good, when the story's no good, yeah. and when the it won't sell as well as it could. No. Yeah. Um, and I have no problem with Snyder saying that that Scott and and Capullo are the reason Batman is selling as good as it is because it's true. Um, it will always sell big numbers. It's Batman. Problem, but the thing is, when you have something great, you'll bring in a lot more yeah. people that are don't not doesn't care. Um, but back to Liefeld. Um, Again, this is a guy that has dealt with the corporate structure not well. Yeah. Um, he's he's been notoriously known for his lateness, his unpromptness. Um, could this could DC? How did DC man? I think it's more a thing of DC managed to wrangle three books on time from him for as long as they did. For as long as they did. Um, but the problems that it hints at are are are, are still too too big to ignore. Because um, there was a grifter book. That was supposed to come out. I don't know, Grifter and Superman crossover though. It was they were trying to put apparently they were trying to put Grifter in the center of the DC universe for a while with the whole Damonite thing. That's weird. And then they, they it answered, got changed. They did integrate. I think Hellspot was a yeah. Wildcats villain into Superman. Yeah, yeah they did. They and, did. And he was in the annual, the Superman yeah. annual. Yeah. Apparently, Grifter and Hawkman both were supposed to be in the Superman annual. Yeah. And of course, anyone who read that annual knows that it happened. Um, but. Come on, guys, read annuals. Don't skip them all. No, they're they're very important stuff. You know, in all honesty, some of those the DC annuals that have been coming out have really been... They've been good about kind of tying it into yeah, the current oh, storylines. If you didn't read the Superboy annual... Uh, I didn't. I swear to God, are you serious? Yeah. Just keep going, because we got these two cameras. Okay, well, Tracy, that's fine. watch your wheel there. Yeah, watch your wheel. Uh, again, Tracy? Anyway, uh, uh, that's Tracy, <laughs> our camera guy, rubbing over a, a Buffy comic. Buffy, but um, mm, Buffy. <laughs> that's an outtake. Uh, Buffy. But we'll say with the annual. Yeah, if you don't read the Superboy annual, you're not yeah. going to be left out of the of the Hell on Earth thing. But it's also a good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say I'll Superboy. say do the Superboy thing because no. it's a great interaction between Superboy yeah. and Superman, no. which has been fun to have. Anyway, back to no. Rob Liefeld. Um, again, I'm always I'm, when I first came out. I was vaguely aware of George Perez. I knew when there was some things when, well, when he first when he first came out talking about him leaving and all the bad yeah. problems. Uh, the big deciding factor for me that there may be more to that than just Rob being Rob yeah. was in December, when out of nowhere, Gail Simone's off Batgirl. Yeah, and Gail Simone is Batgirl. All right, this isn't that is like. All. That came just out of nowhere. Nowhere. Critically and acclaimed run. Commercially successful. I mean, it's not a top ten book, but you know what? It's, it's a solid. It's, it's Bat Girl. Bat Girl's sales. never top ten. No, but she has sustained. Uh, she's sustained her sales. She hasn't fallen off as big as she has yeah. as other books have. I mean, it's still one of their top books. And Gail Simone has a fan base unlike any other. I'm one of them. Yeah. Um, I only own the first issue. Only on the first. Only on the first. Oh, you're you're a shame. It's well, no, it. I'm on a very tight budget. And Understood. I, and also too, um, they have a flashback of the Killing Joke in there. Yeah. And I like to own that one, saying, "No, look, I, I'm Killing Joke." Yeah. Sure, it is exactly like that one. Look, I'm more. I'm con. You know, <laughs> I'm up to date with it. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but uh, they let her. Apparently, the new uh, editor. That came on Brian Cunningham, and for reasons that we'll never know, we don't know if it's higher up or if it's on his own thing, uh, cut her, just cut her out. Um, uh, the reasons behind, again, was editorial disagreements. 
uh, with some people saying that it dealt with uh, DC wanted her to be paralyzed again, um, or just something very violent that, that, that Gail did not agree with. And if you've read the, the Batgirl stuff, there's a lot of violence in the Batgirl comic. Yeah, um, and you have to kind of... I mean, I've, I've flipped through them, yeah. and there's... But... Then, what, yeah, just again, uh, she was out, she's going to be out by this issue, and then 17 and 18, uh, or whatever, or 18 and 19 were going to be written by a, a, a secondary writing team or whatever, and then they were going to announce who the new writer yeah. was. And who was the new writer? Gail, Gail Simone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because apparently they realized really quickly that her fan base... A, was, well, as computers. It was a, big, it was a big enough backlash. Yeah, that, and uh, yeah, they, they, they... Rightfully they, so. Rightfully so. Thank you, Ian. Thank you on that one. Uh, again, why? Why would this, this... This is the one that upset me. This is the one that made me start really thinking about something bad going on in the editorial thing. What could have possibly caused... You can't say DC higher-ups, because, again, this is one of their better-selling books with one of their most beloved writers and creators. I mean, for the love of God, she coined the phrase lady in the, in a, in in the, the refrigerator. refrigerator. Um... And long time uh, writer on Birds of Prey, yeah. Secret Six. I don't know anyone that said anything bad about her. Um, I know enough creators have written enough stuff. A lot of creators went onto Twitter and put some very, very, very choice words yeah. uh, out there. Guys, come on. I mean, this is Gail Small. I said, I, I'm seeing you talking about being upper management. I think they're dealing with a level of success they haven't had in a while. Their comics have been dominating sales, well, sales for the well, last like 16 months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ever since the launch of New 52. And I think they're actually kind of, the success has kind of gotten to the head where they think they can do no wrong. Ooh, that's a bad way to be, though. Mm -hmm. And obviously, comics, you can be hot one issue and the next issue, mm. no one cares. They're done with you. So Very true. And I, I wonder how much of the editors thinking they that it was their doing that was causing everything to be great when. Well, anyway, editors. I mean, they they choose the storyline. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they choose. They thought their direction, their yeah. vision, was the one that people want. And a lot of times, it's the nuance of. So we got like maybe a, team. a new. So maybe what we're seeing is because uh, I never thought about that actually. Uh, Brian, a new editor. Maybe he has an idea for Batgirl that Gail's like. That's not what I've been building up to. Yeah. And that could be the issue? Is that maybe... Yeah, I mean, he, that's... He that's overlooked there, this? There's probably, like, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that nobody really knows. It right. Never will. I mean, yeah. it could have just been as simple as Gail could have just said the, just a little, innocent little mark, and it just peed off the wrong person. And they, they let her go for that. I think they learned it, something really bad, then. Or it could have been that she, she chose to um, never put Barbara back in the wheelchair... I don't and think DC, she should. and DC's like, no, we're gonna put her back in the wheelchair because people, um, people have been screaming for it, but that never made any sense to me because that's a step, they've they've they've, step, they've, to, they've told that story. Yeah, it's yeah. a step backwards to me. It's like the Very whole so. it kind of defeats the purpose of even doing the new Fifty Two. That's what go made to... me actually want to read Batgirl because I first when I heard that she was back, I was like, oh, they just undid all that work. That's crap. They're like, no, that all happened. Yeah. But now she's been walking. I'm like, oh, well, that's a very interesting story. That's what got me yeah. back into her. Uh, I love Stephanie Brown. She was great as Batgirl, but this is an interesting story. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially like I mean, like Dark Knight Rises, where you know, been out of the game for a while. Is, yeah, you know, trying to get back on your yeah. feet. And, and Gail has been writing a very interesting take on Barbara, as uh, someone who's having to deal with. She's putting herself back into a a situation where she could wind up back in that chair anyway, yeah. or worse. Um, some you know, again, I don't. Maybe we don't understand it because we're we're farther away or moved. We don't know all the details. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those weird kind of things where you just wonder how much of it's Warner Brothers. That's another good point. Yeah. It's the Bat title and Batman is, I mean, that is their big yeah, since DC. 16, I actually did the thing. There are 16 Bat specific titles between <laughs> Bat lot. Family. Bat That's a like quarter family. of their, yeah, quarter of their out portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, I mean, that's more I, than a quarter, actually. That's yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, would you think this will actually teach them? Because this is actually the first time that there was such a big backlash that DC had to re yeah. mm -hmm. retread their actual statement and, and bring her back on. We got two issues without her now. 
coming I mean, up. It's I mean it's not unprecedented. I mean it's, it's happened known. with other companies like Mark Way with Fantastic Four. Yeah. And, but again, we got DC at the height right now of, of the comic book world still. Yeah. Um, for them, I mean, buying, getting shares that they haven't had in, in a while. Yeah. And I think the worst thing they can do is actually get a big head about this. Not to mention, yeah, you gotta wonder about Warner Brothers' in, uptake on this because yeah. they whatever. own DC. And when we come back from break, we're gonna talk about those higher ups at, D, at, at Warner Brothers and DC yeah. uh, and try to figure out maybe. Well, we're just going to discuss possibilities because we don't know that much, but we're going to discuss it. Yeah. You're going to watch it, and we're going to talk some more shop. We'll be right back. Can I take my pants off now? Yes, you can. Please do. I, I, didn't, I didn't know if you put your one finger up or not.